Hey guys, Ricky here, and thanks for tuning into this week's edition of the DOD Contract Academy. This is the second time that I have attempted to record this episode. And when I say that, I will I will tell you, I have a full-blown episode that's produced and ready to go, but I just didn't feel good about releasing it. And I'll tell you why. If you listen to this podcast a lot, you know that we spend a lot of time talking about strategy and about gaining focus so you can eliminate wasted time and learn the steps that you actually have to take to win contracts. So we spend a ton of time on how to win contracts. And that's that's really almost the exclusive focus of this uh, show. You know, Maybe the exception to that would be when we're interviewing companies that are selling to the government. You know, We may go into some other areas. But with all of the training and you know, even the clear steps that we present, there is one thing that, we, and I provide that to our students, and I provide it to the higher end clients that were, when I say higher end, I just mean companies that have been doing this for a while, they're bringing in, they have resources to pay someone like myself a larger consulting fee to work one-on-one -on -one with them. But what, what's striking is whether it's a big company or whether it's a small business, the fact remains that managing all of the leads, building a pipeline, and then actually running and managing that pipeline in an efficient manner is always a challenge. Always. It's it's a challenge for the, you know, the entrepreneur that's just starting out. And it's a challenge for the 10 person sales team that's, you know, been doing this for a while. Why is that? Well, when you're in, by the way, if you don't know what a CRM is, it stands for customer relationship management. It's a software tool. If you haven't had a sales job, you may not have used one of these. I didn't. I've never. I didn't use one until I retired from the Air Force. My wife uses one. She's in real estate. Um, I certainly use one. I use multiple ones. Actually, I use one for my business. I use one for selling to the government. Now, what's what's tricky about selling to the government is the process, right? We talk a lot about how the process is different, and I have never seen a tool that was set up for selling to the government to help you manage all of those leads. That's designed, and that's where the focus comes from, and that's that's why we're we're having this episode today, and, and kind of why I'm talking to you. Here's what I want you to have at the end of this episode: I want you to have a concrete path forward for managing your pipeline of leads from leads to closed contract that will take you step by step through that entire process. Okay. Many businesses are using spreadsheets to do this. Others have taken Salesforce, have taken, which by the way, I love Salesforce. I use Salesforce all the time. Asana, they've taken HubSpot and they're trying to manipulate those into something that makes sense for going after government contracts. And it's never perfect. And, and often there's, you know, companies and people don't have a good system for this. They're trying to take a sales process designed at selling commercially in B2B and squeeze federal contracting into them. This is a long way of saying that we are, so I guess I'm officially announcing that we are developing a CRM tool, um, a launch pad, a software that businesses, entrepreneurs can take that's designed for selling to the government from scratch. It's not designed for anything else. We're not selling it for any other purpose. We're not selling it yet, but we're in the process. We're close to having this. And there's going to be some other things in addition to a CRM tool, but basically a suite of things that that you need to sell to the government. And honestly, I got so sick of having to manipulate CRM tools to do what I wanted them to do or taking people's, at worst, spreadsheets and, and doing that, uh, that we decided to build it. So that's one announcement. I just wanted to put that out there. Be on the lookout for that. That's going to be coming out soon. I will let you know when it will be available. I am, now I'm just thinking out loud, but I am probably going to let uh, the students in the academy test drive it for me before I release it for free, uh, just so we can work out any bugs or kinks. But um, we're really excited about this. I think this is going to be a game changer for everyone. So that's what I want to talk about. We are coming out with a, a CRM tool designed for selling to the government. It's going to have some other features as well that I haven't brought up. I haven't named it yet, and it's not out yet, but it's coming. And you'll be the first to know when you will have access to that. In the meantime, here is the episode I planned on releasing today. <clears throat>
And this one talks about very, very blatantly how to use a spreadsheet <laughs> to manage some of the opportunities. And the reason I wanted to put it out there is a lot of people don't know where to start, right? So you're going to start by finding an opportunity and you put in key parameters into your either CRM or spreadsheet. And I'm going to talk about what those things you need to think about are when you're selling to the government. And some of these are a lot different than B2B, B2C sales. And so as you build that out, you're now going to have a list of things that you're going to look at each day. So when you want to know, hey, what am I supposed to be doing every day? Well, if you have, let's say, 10 opportunities on here, three of them are things that you need to write a response for coming up. You know, maybe five of them are, you know, something you just have to monitor until three months from now. You know, those are the, those are the type of things that are going to keep you uh, honest and aware of the opportunities as they change. So you can track them down, turn those into closed deals. All right. Here's the original episode. Take care. Hey guys, Ricky here with the DOD Contract Academy podcast, where we teach and help small businesses sell their products and services to the biggest purchaser of goods and services in the world, the US government. Okay, so today we are going to have a great episode because we're going to do a six part series where we are going to walk through how you are gonna build your pipeline and start getting that momentum you're after. So this is for you, if you feel confused or you feel overwhelmed with all of the information out there about government contracting, this could be for those seasoned professionals or those that are new to it, we're going to show you how step-by-step step, you can build a pipeline that you can manage and take action on day by day, each week, each month that are going to hit your revenue goals over the next couple of years so you can start winning those government contracts, make the country a better place, grow your business, improve the lives of you and your family with the additional income that's going to be coming in from these contracts. So let's get started. I want this to be simple and easy for you guys here. So if you are ready to get clarity on your government contracting process and to start making some progress, then this is where we're going to start. Okay. So this is a spreadsheet. So if you have windows you, on your computer, you probably have something like this. This is Excel. And if you have an Apple, so I do, I use a Mac, but I have the Windows uh, suite, the Microsoft suite rather. So I have access to you know Word and Excel and all of that. If you don't have Excel, that's fine. If you're on a Mac, you can use numbers. I've used numbers before. Honestly, you could use a Word document or anything you could write on, okay? But you wanna be able to manipulate this. I would use it digitally. I would not have a, a manual pipeline, okay? And why is it so important to have a spreadsheet or something to manage your pipeline. Well, for those of you that have been in sales for a while or business, you probably are familiar with the term CRM. And a CRM, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it's basically a software or a tool that helps you to manage leads that are coming in, opportunities, so you can track them, you can update it, you can get notifications. A good tool can automate some of this for you, but you have got to have a way to find and track opportunities with the US government or any anybody that you're selling to. So if you're B2B or B2C, you should be familiar with this. Doesn't matter what industry you're in, you need something, okay? Now, eventually, I would recommend you get off the spreadsheet. I don't use, I use Salesforce personally when I'm tracking opportunities. I'm gonna show you how to use a sale uh, spreadsheet and start getting some of this um, organization that you're going to need going forward. So open up a spreadsheet. First thing I'm going to do is start filling in some of the headers that I want at the top. Now you can edit as you want to, if you don't like any of these, but the first thing I start with is the opportunity name. I'm typing opportunity name in, okay? Because we need a way of identifying each opportunity, all right? And the next one that I like to do is I'm going to put in agency. And when I say agency, I mean the federal agency who owns the project. Now, I like to go a little bit deeper than that. So any information you can get is what acquisitions office is it? 
Is it, you know, because the DOD, Department of Defense, you could say, okay, it's Department of Defense. If it's an Air Force effort, it's Air Force, but is it Air Force Materiel Command? Then you can put that in there. Is it with Air Force Research Lab? You can put that in there. So uh, we want to be able to identify the opportunity and who we are selling to. Next, we are going to put the close date. And the reason I put this in here, and there's a couple different ways to look at the close date. But for this purpose, I want to know when is the contract actually forecasted to close? When do I think the government is going to close th this deal? When would it, when's it going to be money in my bank account? Because that's important for you, right? We need to know when the money could potentially come in if you win this opportunity. So for this date, I'm not putting, you know, if you're if it's a sources sought submission, that's not the date I'm putting in here. That's a deliverable. That's something you have due, but that's not when the money's going to come in, right? So if you have a, for instance, a source is sought for those listening that don't know that term, that's when the government puts out a, basically a request for information. They want to know what types of businesses can solve a problem set. So I want to buy 500 cars, or I want to put somebody on contract to do the bookkeeping for a government organization. They might say, hey, we're wondering what kinds of businesses can do this. What are the best maybe technologies that accountants use for bookkeeping right now? What They're trying to figure out what goes into the proposal. Now, this is not an episode on Sources Sought. I just wanted to give you an idea of what that is. Sources Sought comes before the solicitation. So if the Sources Sought was due October 1st of 2023, which would be stupid because that's the first day of the fiscal new fiscal year, then the solicitation is going to come out probably in calendar year 24, January timeframe, maybe, maybe even after that. And then, you know, there's going to be a due date for all the proposals. Then the government has to review everything. So it could be summer of 2024 when it's going to close. And they might tell you when they think the close date is going to be. But again, that's close date. So I'll put the close date in here. Next, again, you can manipulate this any way that you want to. For a lot of the students in DOD Contract Academy, they are going to have a mix of opportunities that they are priming on and subcontracting to, right? And you might be in the same boat. Are you going to subcontract to somebody else? Or are you trying to sell, are you selling something direct to the government and nobody else is involved? This is where I just put sub, sub or prime because I want to know Immediately, am I partnering with a bigger company or another company to help get a deal one, essentially, to help get us across the finish line? Or is it something I'm doing on my own? Now, I could be the prime and still have a teaming opportunity, and I'm going to make a note about that if that's the case. So subprime, that's the next thing I want to do. Then I'm going to go to uh, stage. I want to know what stage we're in. This is where I might put something like, hey, the sources, we're looking at a source of saw it, or... This is a acquisitions forecast. And by the way, we're going to go through in the following episodes, how you're going to find these opportunities. I'm going to go through the tools, the free tools that you can use to find them, the different types of opportunities. So where and how to find sources sought for your type of business, where are you going to find acquisitions forecasts for your type of business? I'm going to show you that. And then we'll talk about execution, some of the other stages as well. Okay, now this is an important column here because this is where we're going to talk about the money, right? You're in business to make money. I'm in business to make money. We need to know how much money is in this spreadsheet. I can tell you if I'm working with a client selling to the government, they have a revenue goal in mind, right? You are going to need to develop a revenue goal because unless we develop that revenue goal, we're not going to be able to build this pipeline out to something that is going to accomplish our objective, Right. And this is important whether you're selling to the government or selling commercially. So I do this in my B2B sales and my commercial sales. So, you know, our clients that we're advising on, you better believe I have and I use Salesforce, but something like this. And I know how much each one of those clients is worth, right? Because I have my own revenue targets. And so I'm going to be able to plug that number. And you want to have a number in here. And I'll show you a little bit later why this is so important. But here, this is the money column. Next. This is very important. This is context. Some of you may feel lost because you're like, oh, Rick, who do I reach out to and even start talking to? I know how to sell, but I can't just walk onto a military base. I can't, I don't know who is the person that can make this purchase happen for me. Right? And although there are a lot of people in that chain in the government, 
we are going to show you how and where to find some of the contact information. Who can you reach out to? So this is where contacts, and I'm going to put those in there. It's important. You fill in each one because you're going to be going back to this over and over again and improving it, making it better. And eventually you'll move on to a CRM tool like Salesforce. And I know I've mentioned them a few times. They're not paying me. Trust me, I'm paying them. Okay, contacts. The next one is just notes because I want to know. Again, we can rearrange these if we want to, but I'm going to have notes on each of these opportunities because, again, this is a, a process. I look at it as a work of art. I, I geek out about this stuff. So I love as these start getting filled in and I start making my way closer and closer to that contract ending. But this is going to really give you that sense of purpose moving forward and just a path to follow. This I'm going to put incumbent. And incumbent, all an incumbent is, is that means that there's a contract out. Let's say it's that bookkeeping contract. If the government has somebody on that contract right now, you know, the Air Force might have, you know, Ricky Howard's company doing the book, Ricky Howard bookkeeping, we'll call it. Well, if Ricky, Ricky Howard bookkeeping has been doing this one service contract for three years, it may be coming back out for recompetition. Okay. You want to know if my company is on there, because you're going to make a decision if you can go after that contract or not. And there are some things that you're going to want to think about there. If it's my company, you don't want to go against me though, because I'm doing an awesome job. Government wants to keep me, right? Um, all right. And then finally, I'm just going to put next steps. Again, there's a lot of other fields here that we can put in, but I think this is good enough for now. Okay, and next steps, that's important because you need to know what to do with this opportunity and that needs to change. So I'm going to make this a little bit easier to read. I'm just making it pretty for anyone that's sitting here on the podcast wondering what they signed up for here. Okay. Now, what I have is a spreadsheet. And at the top, I have a variety of columns, starting with opportunity, then agency, then I have the close date. Is it a sub or prime stage? What stage are we in? How much money is this worth? Contacts, notes, is there incumbent and next step? Okay, simple enough. Right, But now we have the beginning of what our pipeline is going to look like. So I'm going to give you one example. Now, I will get into in future episodes how we are going to find these opportunities. But I just want to show you what it looks like to start populating something like this. Okay, and This is what I do. Now, I've already got it to sam.gov. And I'm using construction as an example here. Okay, So this, <clears throat> what I'm looking at is sam.gov. And this is a sources sought notice that's come out. Now, sam.gov, if you're new to the podcast, is where you register your company to sell to the government. It's also where a lot of the government opportunities, not all, but a lot of the government opportunities are going to be presented. It is it is the repository for all of that. So sources sought, requests for proposals, where you'll bid on some of this, sam.gov, and it's free. Now, I use paid for tools as well. I talk about those in other episodes. But for anyone listening, you can go to sam.gov right now. You can register your business. It's self-explanatory. We can search for things like sources sought, requests for information from the government, requests for proposals. This is where they're looking for you to help them solve a problem, and then they're going to pay you. Okay, so now I have a source sought, and we're using construction as an example. Now, this sources sought. Okay, so now I have a source of sought up here. It is due on August 30th, okay? And again, it doesn't matter. The date for this doesn't matter. As long as you're finding a source of sought that is due ahead of, you know, where you currently are. So for me right now, it's August 29th. It's probably going to be August 30th or even September when I publish this episode. But 
usually you want to give yourself at least a week or two on a source of side to uh, write, write one. But for the sake of argument, we are going to say that this source of thought makes sense for when it's due and for what our company does, right, that we are uh, pretending to be today. Uh, this is for maintenance of hospitals and infirmaries, okay? This is with the VA. And so I've read through all of this as a business and I know that, okay, this looks like something that I might be interested in. There's a variety of documents down here and they're going to give you all the specifications. You know, uh, it has pre-site visits, a lot of different things here, different drawings that you're going to go through. But again, we're just going to go and input this information into the pipeline spreadsheet because that is what we're going through today. So I've gone through all of this. This is something I want to engage on. So where do I pull the dates from. So the first thing is what's the name of the opportunity. So renovate building, and then there's a bunch of codes out there, but I'm just going to say, yeah, I'm going to, I, and you can make up your own name. I mean, Okay, let's start filling out this spreadsheet. So the first thing we are going to do, name of this is renovate building. And actually I'm going to add to that because there's gonna be, if I'm in construction, there's a lot of building renovations that I'm gonna be doing. So this one has a product service code that's maintenance of hospitals. So we are going to go, and maybe I've read through the documents already, so I know this is going to be maintenance of hospitals. So I'm going to put hospital renovation. And we know it's with the VA, but as I mentioned earlier, we want to be as specific as possible. So we know what office this is in. It is in office number 250, network contract office. And I'm going to put the whole code in there too. That's okay. You don't need to know necessarily what that is right now, but you can Google these codes and find out exactly where. And there's also location information. And that might be important to you also as a construction firm. You know, if you want to work in a particular state, that could be something that I add. So I can go right in. I can add that. Let's see. It says place of performance is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I can go in right there. I'm gonna create my own new column here. Place of performance or location. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, the close date, it's right here, 30 August. So they give you all of this, right? 30 August. Okay, then you're gonna make a decision. A, is this sub or prime? Now you would have reviewed all of this, um, but I know for this one, I'm going to be the prime and I'm probably going to sub to some other organizations. Now, one of the things in here, as you're reading through it, just in case you're following along with me online, you'll see it starts off that this says, this is a source of sought from the Department of the VA, the Veterans Affairs. And we want to look at market research only, which is what a source of sought RFI is. And it says, we're interested in service disabled veteran owned businesses, veteran owned businesses, uh, hub zone businesses, 8A, uh, economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses and other non-socioeconomic small business concerns who believe they have the experience and qualifications to respond. So reading that, I feel like I am cleared as a small business. So whether you have a certification or not, 
you can respond to this. Now, how you respond to it is going to drastically change depending on whether you are you have a SDVOSB, an 8A, or if you're a small business, right? And that's going to be just recommending. I recommend that you set this aside for my type of business. Or if you don't have a certification, like, hey, I'm the best one that can do this job and do not set this aside. Okay, so what else are we looking for here? I want to know what stage this is in. So this is a source of thought. How much is this worth? It says it right in here, right? Magnitude of construction, 1 million to 2 million. I'm going to be conservative and put 1 million, but it could be up to 2 million. So you can put whatever you want. Now, contacts, where do I find those? Uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go. If you're following online, I'm not going to say their email address because I'm just giving an example. But if you're finding a source of saw it on sam.gov, it's going to give you a primary point of contact. So I have a primary point of contact. This is probably either a contracting officer, maybe their assistant, maybe a program manager. In fact, I'm just going to take their name right off of this because that doesn't matter. Don't We only email the government if we are interested in an opportunity. Okay, what notes do I want to uh, discuss here? It depends. It depends on your small business, right? So I read through this earlier and I know that I am going to need uh, maybe two different subs and I want them to work with a VA. So two subs, it could be for anything, right? We'll just say I need an electrician and maybe plumbing because that's not something that I do primarily. And by the way, and we can get into this later, but I know, because I do this all the time, that the VA awards a ton of work to service disabled, better known small businesses. And maybe this company that I'm representing as I write this is not a SDVOSB. Maybe we're just a small business. So what I want to do is I want to find two SDVOSBs. I've read through everything, so I know there's no incumbent. This is new work, so that's good. I don't have to do any research on that. Okay, and next steps. What am I doing for next steps? Well, one is I have to write this source of saw it. And two is I want to, if I don't already have it, I am going to want to set up a teaming agreement with the two SDVOSBs that I'm going to need. What have we done here today? Well, now, and I'm going to populate this, right? So you're going to go out and I'll show you how to find the opportunities. But what you end up having is potentially 10 to 20 different opportunities in here that you're going to be working. And you're going to have dates that things are due. And you're going to have next steps. Now, if I know that I have a source of sought to write on this one and it's due in five days, this might be the closest fire for me, right? So I might even highlight this in red because something's something's coming up due, right? But I need to know, I need a way of tracking the opportunities and knowing what comes first. Where do I put my time? By the way, you might be paying somebody to assemble this for you. This might be someone on your team needs to do this, okay? So lots of ways to manage it, but this is the start. So my challenge for you today is to open up a spreadsheet on your laptop or your computer Fill in the columns, just like I did. By the way, you can watch the YouTube video if you wanna see what we're doing here. I may offer this on the website too, if, if enough people want it. Um, this isn't a big deal, but it's very easy to produce and it's free. So that's why we're using Excel. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week to DoD Contract Academy. Right now, you should have a plan to start executing and moving forward to win those first government contracts. Next, we're gonna talk about how to find the opportunities that populate this spreadsheet that we just put together. And look, if you are looking for more help, if you wanna minimize the timeline on your side for winning those government contracts, head over to dodcontract.com. You can subscribe and become a member of DOD Contract Academy, where you'll receive the on-demand training and weekly coaching with me, the other students and other members that are subject matter experts in the DOD Contract Academy community to help you win those first government contracts. I hope to see you in the Academy. We'll see you on the next podcast. Take care.